Anita here again from Ubrink Studio. Um, today we're going to be doing part two of the soluble film. If you want to know more about me to stop me rabbiting on, the best thing to do is to look me up. So for the website, it's www.eaubrinkstudio.co.uk or you can put Ubrink Studio into any of the social medias or just into Google and they all pop up. So I'm on Facebook, Instagram and uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, if you can't find me on Ubrink Studio, just look up Anita O'Neill. Um, and that's Anita, A-N-I-T-A, and then O'Neill is O apostrophe N-E-I-L-L. So that's that bit out of the way. Uh, you can message me on admin at ubrinkstudio.co.uk if you want to email me with any requests or any further information. So let's get to it, shall we? We're talking about this stuff. Okay, now in the many, 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 many years ago, it used to be called Aquafilm, but um, now it's called Dissolvable Film and out of the packet, it looks like a piece of plastic. Well, it is. Today we're going to be mixing fibres in with it. So I have some man-made fibres that we can use. Uh, this red stuff is Angelina and this is the standard one, not the hot fix one. Um, the hot fix one you just iron it and it ends up as a fabric so it goes solid like this. Okay. So any bits and pieces that you have just keep them because then you can mix them in with this film. Right. Um, the other thing that you can put in are natural things. So this is like a Harris tweed type thing and there are other tweeds and bits and pieces. So anything that you've got, just hang on to it. And if you're thinking, what on earth is she rabbiting on about? I'll show you. So today, we're going to be doing this. So this is a grid. It's still a bit tacky because I've only just started to dissolve it and I wanted to keep it because I'm actually going to shape it um, for another reason, okay? So the top part of the grid, as you can see, you can see the sparkly bits in there, the Angelina, um, and it's quite intense. And then as it goes through and through and through, I make it lighter and lighter and lighter so that there's not so much stitching, but we can put more um, fibers and things in it if we want to. And then you're thinking, what on earth do you do with that? Well, you make things like this. So this is my lovely top hat that I made. It's very steampunkish. Um, but as you can see, this is not a shop bought lace. This is a lace that I have made and I have also made papers and stitched into all of this. And as you can see here, it's still very open in amongst all the handmade paper, which is holding it together. So this is one of the reasons why you might want to learn how to use this technique. And also the band of ribbon is using this technique too. So literally just stitching over and over and over using a faff sewing machine because it's my favorite and um, using the set stitches that are on here. So, um, and for those of you saying, I bet she never wears that hat. Yes, she does, but she doesn't stitch in it because it gets wobbly and starts coming off because it's too big for me. So that's that bit. And she throws it on the floor. There you. Okay. So, if you want to use a hoop, as we talked about in, sorry about that, in part one, these are the hoops that you use for under your machines. They're quite narrow, they're very thin. There are two parts to them. And you just pop your pieces in and you screw it up and tighten it. I don't like using them even though I have them. I find that they're quite cumbersome so I don't bother if I can help it. So I'm just going to adjust the angle of the camera so that you can see what I'm up to. So just as they say, bear with. While I adjust that so you can see the machine. So here we have our piece of soluble film and here are my little bits of Angelina which I'm going to put in as well as this 
man-made stuff. I don't even know what it is. But it's very pretty. So I'm just snipping bits off as I go. I like the fact that this has got lots of different colours in it. I'm going to spread them out a bit because I don't want big thick lumps either. I might actually have too much in here. If that's the case, we'll just take some out. Okay. So spread it about a bit. Put a little bit more Angelina in it. So it will help bind it and hold it together as well. Just bring that around there. Okay. Fold it over so that you have a sandwich. I'm just going to move all that off there. So I now have my sandwich and I'm going to sew in a grid. So the first thing that I'm going to do, because I want these trapped, is to sew a square. Okay. is so this is the first part I have literally just gone round the edges in a big square and sealed it all in so nothing's going to really move much except for inside that bag okay so the next part is to go over that outside and then start coming in and out in a grid and that's the important thing because if we just dissolved this stitch as it is because um, it's quite a loose stitch let me find a piece where it's easier for you to see can you see that? Not so sure. There you go. 
okay if you just dissolve that you'll just, it, the stitches will come undone and you'll just end up with two long straight threads of um, cotton which is not what you want so back into it When you're turning to always have the needle down and your foot off of the pedal if you're using the pedal um, if it like the machines like this particular machine I'm pressing the on off button so it's going to leave the needle down anyway but if I was using another machine like the Benina then I would make sure it's down um, there we go stitch see now that we're building up quite a thick edge here which is, means that when it's dissolved it's not going to fall apart so we'll now start working on the grid to start with I'm going to do it so that it's overlapping by one half width of this foot my bobbin telling me it's about to run out. So you see now I have two lines there, one overlapping the other. I'm going to do another line exactly the same where it's overlapping by one half width again.
how we're building this up now. And it's looking quite thick. It's not going to be once it's dissolved. I just now need to change my bobbin. Which is about to run out. And I'm going to put another colour. I'm going to use a red underneath. Whereas we have a pink, so this is like a purpley red, this one, on the top. And it will change the way it looks. Remember, feet off the pedal whilst you've got your hands underneath here, changing bobbins or needles or whatever it is that you're going to be changing. Okay, make sure you've got that up safely. And away we go again, and this is where you'll see how it changes. So I'm now going to go one half again. This next time, it's going to go the full width so that it's going to get finer and finer as we go down. I'm not going to take this out I'm going to turn it around and go back over my stitches that I have just done um, because I want to make sure that they're locked in As you see as we're working down we're getting some gaps appearing which is what we want because we're making lace so the next one there's going to be a bit more of a gap see that and see there's a big gap in between but I'm not going to go over it a second time I'm going on to the next one where I'm going to leave a bit more of a gap
have left the needle down and this time I'm turning it around to come over it again. see the stripes thick and thin so the next one's a narrow one or a thin one however you want to look at it but again I'll leave a bit bigger gap second time a second time. you can see we have quite a bit of spacing and then as we're going up there's less spacing okay so we're now going to start putting the other grid lines in so we're now going to come down this way with our grid starting right on the edge it a little bit and now I'm going to turn it again and come back the other way.
come across the top. Not too far. Turn it again and come down again. again needle in the wrong place turn it and come down again Cross again. Bring it round again. again and down again now see that there is a grid and what we're going to do is fill in the spaces now the grid is there to secure it without the grid you will find that sometimes you'll miss areas and you'll have some problems if you want your grid to be perfect then you can draw grid lines on here but um, I prefer it to be more random so that uh, I don't have proper squares shall we say so I'm just going to start up here and as I say, I'm just going to keep moving this all over the place so it's just randomly stitching.
notice that I am pulling this around. Um, I'm not pulling it so that it's tugging on the needle or breaking the needle in any way, but I am encouraging it to go around because I don't want lots and lots of straight lines. Although we'll still be able to see them, I still want there to be some randomness in this. It also means that the stitches get bigger. our piece and it's ready to be dissolved and I haven't used any particular special threads I actually use very old cottons for this sort of thing so this particular one as you can see is really really old um, doesn't even tell you the brand on here it's that old because it's all worn off so most people would throw old cottons away. I don't throw them away. I think that's such a waste. I like to try and use them. Okay. And also on my sewing machine, I don't have my thread coming through the top. I have them on a stand because I find for this sort of work, it goes through an awful lot better. So now we've got to go and dissolve this. So we'll just switch this off while we go over to the sink. So here we are at the sink ready to dissolve this. I've got the water set so that it's hand hot just a little bit warmer than normal this is on a shower spray because it makes life an awful lot easier and all i'm going to do is run it under the tap dissolving both sides that because that got a little bit hot then. Oh, it's still getting hot. Shouldn't do. Come on. We're now getting it to dissolve. The holes are appearing. You don't need to do it this way using a shower head or anything like that. You can use a bucket or a bowl 
like we did last time. I think these are cat litter tray in the last video. You need to make sure that you've fully dissolved it and you can always tell by the edges. If there are any white, tacky, gluey bits, then you know that you haven't done it all. There you have it, a new piece of lacy fabric. With some sparkle and some lace and some holes. You don't need to do it as dense as this or as thick as this, you can do it as wide as you like. Just practice, play with your sewing machine, play with some of the um, stitches that you have on your machine. So that's the last part of part two. So we have dissolved our fabric after we've stitched it onto lots of grids and things. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you have a go. So don't forget you can make it as heavy as you like. So the piece that we've just done, which was this one, is quite heavy. Um, though it looks quite light there. It's still quite wet. So once it dries, it would look a lot better than it does now. Okay. Last week we made a flower um, and next week I will show you how to use your stitches on your sewing machine to stitch into this and dissolve so the stitches remain. This only works with certain stitches, it won't work on all of them because it all depends on how tight it is. Um, and then I'll show you how you can put it all together to make something. So thank you very, very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you have a go. And if you're wondering where to get your soluble film from, not fabric film, um, just Google it. There are plenty of places that are doing it. I know which is my favourite. However, um, advertising isn't that good, although you probably noticed on the packet. So thank you very much and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.